camera and control settings. Not a lot is talked about these things when it comes to being the best you can be at Rocket League. Although it may not seem that important, let me tell you it absolutely is. It matters a lot. When you first install Rocket League and load it up for the first time, your camera settings will look like this. And if you've been playing a while and they still look like this, please for the love of God change them. What do I change them to? This is where I come in. If you head over to the settings tab, you'll see a variety of different subcategories such as gameplay, camera, controls and so on. The categories we're going to be focusing on is these two, camera and control settings. Let's have a look at camera first. Before you change anything, I suggest that you hop into Freeplay so when you change your camera settings, you can see an immediate change once you've messed around with them. Now, first of all, field of view. This slider controls how much of your surroundings you can see. With it all the way up, you can see a lot, and with it all the way down, you can't see shit. So for this one, I personally recommend that you put this all the way up to 110, or 109 if you prefer to be a little bit closer to your car. Oh, I, I almost forgot. If you have camera shake on, turn it off. No questions, just do it. Next is the distance. Pretty self-explanatory. It controls the distance that the camera is away from your car. For this one, I personally use 290, but anywhere from 270 to 300 is recommended. Height. Again, pretty self-explanatory. It controls how high the camera is above your car. I use 100 height, but a lot of people, including a lot of pros, are using 90 height, and some use 100. But again, if you're around that area, you're good. Angle. This controls the tilt of the camera from behind the car. Put your angle all the way up and you'll see pretty much level to the ground. Have it all the way down, you'll be looking down at your car from above. I personally have this set to minus three as it gives me a good view of the field and my car. Also a little side note, the closer the camera is to your car, some people out there such as freestylers claim that it helps your ball control as you can see a closer image of your car and the ball when they make contact. But finding a good balance between the two is just perfect. Now these last three are down to personal preference. Stiffness controls how strict the camera follows your car whilst in car cam mode. And swivel and transition speed control how quickly you can change camera modes and look around using camera swivel. Oh, and invert swivel is just inverted controls for camera swivel, so do whatever you want. Okay, so that's the camera settings portion out of the way. To summarize, here are all of my personal camera settings. Fun fact, I actually copied these camera settings from a pro Rocket League player, Scrub Killer. So if you don't necessarily like these settings I've shared with you, maybe find out what your favorite pro or other content creator uses and try those out. My final point on camera settings is that if you've changed your camera settings drastically, you will need time to get used to them. So don't give up on them 30 minutes into your next session. Have a few warm ups in free play or custom training to really get used to your new camera settings so that you can benefit from them in real games when you're ready. Okay, now on to control settings. As you can see, there is a small box at the top of this screen called view slash change bindings. This allows you to change literally any button to do what you want it to do. For example, you don't want B or circle to be boost, change it to something that suits you better. Here is a complete list of the bindings that I use. You'll notice not a lot has changed from default apart from three things. I've changed my air roll and power slide to be on the same button, which is LB on Xbox and L1 on PlayStation. The reason that I did this is because having these two on the same button allows me to control my car a lot easier whilst only having to press one button. Power sliding and air rolling at the same time can be a huge help if you need to make an emergency recovery or you're doing something like wave dashing, but that's another video. The other button that I've changed is to have air roll left on my X button, that's square on PlayStation. This is so that I can tornado spin whilst I air roll. But yeah, you get the point. I changed my binding so that it makes my life easier. That's basically the gist. So once again, here's my list of bindings so that you can try them out if you want to. Now for the control settings sliders. The first two are about sensitivity. One for steering and one for aerials. Steering sensitivity controls how far you have to push your analog stick to turn at a certain speed. And the same with aerial sensitivity, but in the air. I personally have these both set to 1.4 but I tend to change them around maybe one either way if I'm playing too slow or too fast. Controller dead zone. This controls the space on your analog stick where your input actually starts. The larger your dead zone is, the further away you'll have to push your analog stick a certain direction before it registers in game and vice versa. Well, surely having this set to zero is optimal, right? So that your controller reacts instantly? No. The reason why this is bad 
is that with an extremely small dead zone, your analog stick becomes almost too sensitive. And things can happen such as flipping when you're meant to double jump, as your analog stick thinks you're pushing it left when really you're just resting your thumb on it. Dodge dead zone is very similar. This is the dead zone on your analog stick where a flip happens. So the larger this is, the further away your analog stick has to be from the center for you to perform a flip. Now here are your miscellaneous settings like controller vibration, which I personally don't use, ball cam mode, which controls whether you have to tap a button to turn off ball cam or hold it down. And the rest is irrelevant, unless you play on keyboard and mouse, which I don't. So if you play on keyboard and mouse, try finding a video that can help you out. I just want to say whenever you make a slight change or a drastic change to your settings in Rocket League, they will feel foreign to you. So like I said before, give them a chance and they may be your go-to settings that you never knew about. Okay, that wraps up today's guide about camera and control settings. I really hope this helps a lot of you guys out there as I've seen this video requested quite a bit on the channel. And if this video did help you out, make sure to let me know by leaving a like and a comment. Also, if you changed your settings, let me know what you changed them to. And oh yeah, sub to the channel. We're nearly at a thousand subs. So with all that being said, my name is Oliver, that is O-L-V-R, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.